exactly have a fairy godmother, let me tell you. Closest I ever came to that was a meter maid who let me slide on a parking ticket. Well, maybe not. But you might just have a guardian angel. No, I'm just saying, why don't you hold a ball? Fancy dress ball where you pick your next actress. Have a ball. How tacky can you get? Hey, I don't see anything tacky about it. It'd be a modern-day Cinderella story. I think you'd get a lot of publicity. It's stupid. It's brilliant. Yes, I think you're right. When are you going to admit you got stiffed? I was not stiffed. Paid five bucks for that map. Kid swore it was the latest map of all the end spots. You were stiffed. Come on, Jonathan. Yokels get stiff. Not former cops. Not people with a professionally trained eye. Yeah, well, so far with this up-to-date list of all the in spots in Hollywood, we've seen three parking lots, two supermarkets, and a coin-operated laundry. We don't have time for this. We got work to do. Oh, come on, Jonathan. We're in Hollywood. We at least have to see a couple of sites, huh? Excuse me, pal. Could you tell us how to get to the Macambo? The Macambo? Yeah, it, uh, it says on the map it's one of them real big nightclubs. Gone. How about the Crescendo? Long gone. What about the uh, Romanovs or the Brown Derby? You gotta be kidding. Swab's Drugstore, uh, the Trocadero. Hey, wait a minute. You're Ellen Funt. I recognize you behind that phony beard and that big nose. <laughs> hey, where's the camera, huh? You know, I, I seen that thing with the talking mailbox. <laughs> this is great. I am not Alan Funt. We're from out of town, all right? From out of town, huh? Sounds to me like you bought one of them maps. All right, don't say anything, all right? Just don't say a word. Yeah, I'll tell you one place that's still there. Yeah, where's that? The Hollywood Grill, number 54 on your map, right between the Moulin Rouge and Rin Tin Tin's house. What's so special about that place? It's where you're going to be working. 
when I'm gonna be working. What about you? Jonathan? Jonathan! Oh, I really hate it when he does that. Ooh. Look, Mr. Harris, you gotta give this guy a break. He has a wonderful act! Death. What? Death? Who death? What are you talking, death? The guy's act is death. I saw it 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Corey E. Klein, Klein and his canine, canine clowns. Death. Mr. Harris, that was 30 years ago. That's what I just said. But he's changed the act totally, completely. It was all those K-sounds. Nobody likes K-sounds. There's no warmth in K-sounds. Corey, Klein, canine, corpses. You were right. It was death. But that's all history. So how did he change it? Oh, you're going to love it. Manny Mumford and his marvelous mutts. Oh. M sounds. There's warmth there. Heart. Listen to it. Mm, 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 mm. Sounds like mother. Vinny. You're a good agent. No, I take that back. You're a lousy agent, but, but you're a good person. But Mumford's marvelous mutts, it's deaf. It's wholesome, and you gotta have a spot for something wholesome. The only thing I got open is, is, is an Elks convention. The perfect Elks mutts. What could be more natural? A hundred bucks and you got the act. I can't do it. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks and he'll leave the Doberman at home. No way. Twenty bucks. I told you no. All right. I'll pay you to take him. You'll pay me? I'll pay you your usual commission, and I'll slip you 30 bucks for Manny and the Mutts. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. You're crazy. You know that, don't Mr. you? Mr. Harris, Manny's been with me for 30 years, since before he was Corey Klein. I'm all he's got. Is it a deal? They don't make him any more like you, Vinny. <laughs> Maybe they never did. All right. It's a deal. But you don't breathe a word of this to Manny. My lips are sealed. Thanks. Vinny, you're a good man. Well, I try to be. Try to be what? Never mind. I thought you said something. A few dollars in my jacket no, pocket. No, 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 sir. I'm, I'm not here to rob you. Did not? No. Now, I usually don't tell people this right off the bat, but I'm in kind of a rush, so I'll get right to it. I am an angel. <laughs> Go on, big kid. Oh, sir, I'm not kidding. You're really an angel? That's right. Well, you come to the right place. Come on in. I got a show for you that'll bring back water. Just a teacher around. Vinny, call me Vinny. Hey, can I get you something? Go get some water. A cup of coffee. Hey, trying to cut down on caffeine. A soda! Actually, all I got is water. Look, Vinny, if, if you just let me tell you why I'm here. I know just why you're here. I don't know how you found me, but believe you me, you're a godsend. Well, actually, that's the truth. You want to talk act? I got act! Hey, Marvin Mandrake and his musical soul. Look, Vinny, that's not exactly what... I know. You're going to say he's not high enough, but let me tell you something. Marvin Mandrake can play Flight of the Bumblebee on that thing and cut through a two-by-four at the same time. I'd like to see you Yasha Heifetz try that. Then he try to understand I'm not that kind of an angel. I don't back shows. What kind of angel is there? The kind you were just talking about, the kind that's heaven sent. I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> All right, look, I don't usually show people my powers just for the fun of it, but if it's going to help you to believe, goodbye. <laughs> Where'd he go? Vinny. My gosh. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I gotta sit down. Now do you believe me? I sure do. You could have knocked me over with a feather. What's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan Smith. Look, Vinny, I know you've got a daughter named Cindy. And I know the two of you haven't spoken to each other for over a year, except maybe a couple of times on the phone. That's amazing. Les, what are you doing? Gotta make a quick call. I'll be right with you. 
Hello, Mr. Harris, Vinny DiGiromo. I got an act that's gonna knock you on your ear. Johnny Angel. Vinny. What does he do? He appears, he disappears. He does an act, he does a psychic act that makes the amazing Kreskin look like Mick and your dunce. Wait a second, I'll ask. Johnny, if you can make Queen Elizabeth disappear, I can get you a spot on the... Vinny, will you, will you try to understand, please? I'm not a magician. I'm an angel sent from heaven. Do you understand? I sure do. Harris, are you listening? Now, look, you're not gonna stiff me on this one because this kid is sent from heaven. He's an angel. He's a sweetie pie. He's a pussycat, so you gotta play straight with him. Vinny, I am not a sweetie pie. I'm not a pussycat. I'm not a magician. I am an angel sent from heaven on a mission for God. Hold on, Harris. The kid's freaking out of me. I'll call you right back. Look, let me see if I got this straight. You are an angel? That's right. Sent from heaven? You got it. Kid, I gotta tell you, you got a lot of talent, but I don't handle druggies. Out! Look, Benny, if you'll just listen hey, to me, please. Look, call me old-fashioned. Call me a kook, but it's not my bag. You're a good kid. Come see me when you get yourself straightened out. I'll be back. God, what's the matter with people burning out their brains? Well, Mark, you look very nice in your uniform. Very oh. nice indeed. Thank you, Mr. Stepmutter. Stepmutter! Now, I'd like you to meet my daughters, Hortense and Clarice. Oh, hi. Uh, Mark Gordon. Charmed. Likewise. They both work here? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, contraire, contraire. No, my daughters are artistes, actresses. Bright new stars ready to add their luster to the Hollywood firmament. Well, good luck to you guys. Guys? Guys? Mumsy, he's so coarse. He's so common. Of course he is, dear. He's the help. Now then, come along. I'll show you the kitchen. Cindy, this is Mark Gar. Cindy. Oh, that girl. Cindy! Hey, 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 you don't have to shout. I ain't deaf, you know. Ain't deaf. You should be flogged at high noon in a public square for the crimes you commit against the language of the immortal bard. This is Mark Gordon, our new executive chef. Hi. Hi. Welcome to hog heaven there. I'm sure you two will get on famously. Uh, Mrs. Stepmutter. Uh, Stepmutter. With an umlaut. Right. Uh, do you think that I could knock off early today so as I could go to that audition over at the music box? Audition at the music box? Why, my daughters are auditioning for that production. It doesn't look like we're too busy. I can handle this place if she wants to take off. Well, thanks, Mac. You're a real stand-up guy. So is that okay? And everything? I, it's really important to me. Well, Cindy, you just finish your chores and, uh, yes, that'll be fine. Oh, geez, thanks, Mrs. S. I mean, I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's quite all right, my child. You just finished chopping those vegetables and scrub down the grill, uh, clean the grease pits, mop the floors, hose down the garbage bin and wash all the windows, uh, clean the ovens and launder the tablecloths, uh, clean the slicer and polish the silverware, uh, peel those two bags of potatoes and that sack of onions, then you're free to go. <laughs> Sorry, kid, maybe I said the wrong thing. Hey, don't sweat it. There's no way in the world she would ever let me go. Why? I mean, what has she got against you? Nothing. Just that her daughters are up at the same park. Tell you the truth, I kind of respect her for that. You're kidding. I mean, that woman just dumped all over her and made sure you couldn't get your audition. Well, she was mean to me, but she sure stands by her kids. Gotta give her credit for that, huh? <laughs> You don't need to do that. You're the executive chef. Well, Cinderella had those mice up on her. I figure you could have a former cop. Cinderella, huh? That is a laugh. I don't exactly have a fairy godmother, let me tell you. Closest I ever came to that was a meter maid who let me slide on a parking ticket. Well, maybe not. But you might just have a guardian angel.
Hey, call up Holden. Where do you think you're going? I don't know. He hasn't told me yet. Uh, who hasn't told you? My boss. Look, this is private property, so unless you have legitimate business... Uh, no, no, I, I have business here. I'm with, uh, I'm, I'm with Heavenly Productions. Uh, what's your name? Jonathan Smith. Smith. There's no Smith on my list. Uh, I'm here to see Mr. Prince. I'm sure my name must be on the list, if you could just check it one more time. Oh, sorry, I must have skipped it before. Office is right I know, thank you. Sergio. Yes, Mr. Prince? Look at this, look at this. I've been through both trades twice, cover to cover. There's not one word about my film in there, not one word. Don't exactly have a strong deal here. King's expecting action on this thing. We're gonna have to generate some, Sergio. Yes, Mr. Prince. Excuse me. I'm working the mailroom today and your secretary wasn't in. We have nothing to pick up yet. We need a gimmick. Something to stir the press up. Why don't you have a ball? Why don't you take a hike? No, no. No, wait a minute. What is this about a ball? He's trying to sell some kind of tickets to a ball or something. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, why don't you hold a ball? Fancy dress ball where you pick your next actress. Have a ball. How tacky can you get? Hey, I don't see anything tacky about it. Be a modern day Cinderella story. I think you get a lot of publicity. It's stupid. It's brilliant. Yes, I think you're right. We have a fancy dress ball, invite every starlet in town, and that night, right at the ball, we choose the one to star in my next picture. You've done it again, Mr. Prince. This guy's good. What's your name? Smith. Jonathan Smith. I can't believe it. You really got in to see Max and Prince? That's right. The man doesn't know it yet, but you got the girl he's looking for to star in his next picture. I do? That's right. Ida Wastrakowski. Oh, The Vinny. contortionist oh. contralto! I knew she'd catch on one of these days. Just like I always said, the body of a pretzel and the soul of a Pavarotti. Vinny, it's not Ida. Then who? We'll see. I'll tell you something. You're gonna find out she's gonna be the most important client you ever had. Why are you doing all this for me? What's the angle? What's in it for you? It's like I said, I'm an angel. OK, John. If the chick, whoever she is, gets the part, you got a piece of the action. Oh, Vinny, Vinny, when are you going to understand? OK, 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 you drive a hard bargain, but you got it. Well, figure out a way to work your magic act into the show. Anything you say, Vinny. Here we are. Wait a sec. This is where we're going to find the future star of Max and Prince's next picture? Hey, Vinny. If they could discover Lana Turner in a drugstore, you could certainly discover Cinderella in a Hollywood grill. Let's go. Guess we're early, huh? That's okay. We'll wait for her. I'll be right with you. Daddy? Cindy? That's so much for introductions. Daddy, why didn't you tell me you were coming by? I would have gotten some time off. What are you doing here? That's what I'd like to know. Look, Vinny, the only way I could get you two together was to talk show business. That's all you want to talk about. Besides, I think she's just what he's looking for. Just what who's looking for? Johnny, you're a good magician, but you've got a lot to learn about people. This will never do. What won't do? You won't do. I think she'll do. What well, do? You do. She won't do. Says who? Says you? Yeah, me, that's who. And you won't do. Yeah, well, maybe I don't want to. No, oh, you'd want to. Want to what? Want to do, but you won't do. And even if you could do, I wouldn't do. So there's nothing to do, and that's the end of it. It's done. And there's nothing more to talk about. Daddy, I have not seen you in a whole year. And instead of coming in here and saying, hey, Cindy, how you doing? You'd lay into me with the hoodoo, what do, voodoo, with some clown I've never seen before in my life. And then you'd say there's nothing more to talk about. She's right, Minnie. Thank you. Who are you, anyway? I'm a friend of Mark's. Who's Mark? Fry cook. So you think some cook magician and a fry cook know better than your father? I never said any such thing. Did I say any such thing? Well, what do you think? I think I know what's best for me. Then are you ready to wash that paint out of your hair and move back home and go to college and look like a normal human being? No, I don't think so. Like I said, there's nothing more to talk about. Why? Why can't he just accept me? Uh, I think most parents have two children. The real one and the one they dream about. The one who isn't going to make the same mistakes they did. 
just wish I could do something to make him proud of me. Oh, come on, Cindy. That's not your job in life. Try telling that to him. Holy cow, what was that? I don't know. I'll take a look. <sighs> My father. How you doing, Miss Prince? Who? Oh, the genius from the mailroom. Yeah. Hey, it looks like it's not your day, huh? Tell me about it. Women and cars. First my girlfriend, now this. It's all your fault. What do you mean, my fault? Well, I told my girlfriend about your brilliant idea about the ball. Pick the actress for my next film, right? She dumps me. Why? That's what I said, you know? She says, what do you think I was going with you for in the first place? She thought we had an understanding, right? She was going with me to get a part. Hey, look, why don't you come on inside and have a cup of coffee? Later on, I'll come on out and take a look at this thing. It used to be pretty good with these. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Women. They're all alike in this town. Get them apart. That's all I care about. What'll it be? Yeah, just some coffee. I hate to disagree with you, Mr. Prince, but I really don't think they're all alike. Oh, sure they are. Now, yeah, what's this? Uh, what's your name? Cindy D. Geralimo. You want to be an actress? How'd you know? See what I mean? Oh, come on. Just because she wants to be an actress doesn't... Do you mind? My name is uh, Maxim Prince. I'm producing a new movie for King Studios. Are you kidding? No. No, I'm not kidding. And I think you would be perfect for one of the parts. I'm gonna faint. <laughs> Do you think that maybe I could audition for you? Maybe. But I, I gotta know you better. You know, tonight maybe we'll we'll go out for dinner and we'll talk about it. Um, listen, I don't want to be rude or anything, but if if you think I might be right for the part, why not let me read first and then leave it at that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, are you saying you're not gonna go out with me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, you don't understand. No date, honey. No part. Tough tomatoes. Hey, what is it with you? What is it with me? What is it with you? I'm a producer. Yeah, well, I'm a person, and I don't know you, and you're trying to put the make on me, so goodbye. How about that? What a dame. All right, go ahead, give it a try. Yeah, <laughs> right. You're a regular magician. You know, a lot of people tell me that. Listen, uh, that girl, uh, Cindy, I'm gonna send her an invitation to the ball. Just tell her it's an audition. No strings attached. Don't worry, I'll tell her. Thanks. What a team. What a prince. Gonna get me an invitation to that ball. Jonathan said he would, he will. How can you be so sure? Because. Because. Cindy, we have a customer. Hiya, kid. Two days in a row. It's more than I've seen you in a whole yeah, year. Yeah, and whose fault is that? I don't want to go into that right Listen, now. Listen, kid, I want to apologize for what I said and everything. What? Look, Johnny told me that Maxim Prince guy thinks you might be right for a part in his picture. Oh, it's probably just talk. I, I wouldn't count on it. I don't know. That Johnny Angel seems to be pretty well connected. What I'm trying to say is, if you do get that invite, maybe I can help you. You want to help me try to get a part? Nothing would make me happier, kid. Well, what about me going to college and, and looking like what you call normal? I know, I know, I know, but Johnny came by to see me and he got to talk, and he's quite a talker, that guy, and what it boiled down to is everybody's got their dreams in this life. And if being an actress is your dream, then from here on out, it's my dream, too. You mean that? What do you think? 
I think you're the best dad in the whole world. This invitation is mine! Take your hands off it, Tubby! It's mine! Tubby! It came to me, you gargoyle! It came addressed to the girl from the Hollywood Grill! It can only have meant me! Girls, oh. girls, girls, where are our manners? Mumsy, Lardo here is trying to steal my invitation to Maxine Prince's ball! Let me oh. see that. It's not a match ball, dearie, and that's the only kind you'd be welcome at. Oh. Stop that bickering this minute. There are three invitations to the ball. We're all going to that ball. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I believe those invitations are for Cindy. Who are you? My name's Jonathan Smith. I'm a friend of Mr. Prince's. He wanted me to make sure Cindy got the invitations. Uh, don't be absurd. Why, Cindy doesn't even want to go to that ball. Not if she wants to keep her job, she doesn't. Well, Cindy? Well, if you put it that way... Uh... That's exactly the way I put it. Then, no, I guess I didn't really want to go. But, Cindy... It's okay, Pop. Well, come <laughs> along, darlings. Mumsy's going to take you both to Mr. Richie of Laguna to be outfitted for new gowns for the ball. Oh, Mummy, you're the sweetest mummy in the whole world. Yes, <laughs> isn't that true? <laughs> well, Cindy, don't forget to clean up before you leave. Come along, girls. <laughs> Well, so much for that. Oh, well, not necessarily. What do you mean? Well, what's good as a magician if he can't come up with a few tricks, like uh, four more invitations to the ball? Holy cow! How'd you do that? Ah, uh, magicians never tell. This is it. As soon as you close up today, we go to work. On what? On how to act like an actress. Dad, it's 3.30 in the morning. Can we knock off? No way. You're almost there, kid. Now, let's try it one more time. Okay, okay. Now, if somebody says they saw a picture that they like, what do you say? I thought it was marvelous. The textures, the layers, the ambiance. And if they didn't like it? Oh, I thought it was a travesty. No texture, no layers, no depth, and so manipulative and uh, uh, pretentious, really, don't you think? Big Bingo! The kid's got it! Yeah, in just eight short hours, I sound like a real phony. Hey, kid, it's part of the game, you know? Yeah, well, you say so, I guess. I mean, I want this for you as much as you want it for yourself, but face it, kid, you sound like me when you talk. And who's gonna hire somebody what sounds like me? I know you got talent, but all they want is glamour, you know? Do you mean that? Of course I do. Glamour's the name of the game! No, no, I mean about, about me having talent. You bet I do. Hey, you got me convinced you're some hoity-toity lady and I'm your old man. I've seen them come and go, kid. But you're the real thing. You're special. Daddy, that means more to me than getting any part in the whole world. Hey, anybody hungry? Found an all-night pizza place. Hey, good. I'll go and wash up. Well, how's it going? Oh, great. Great, then it's not so great. What do you mean? What's wrong? I just wish that I didn't have to put on all this phony accent and stuff. I just wish I could go there as me. Well, what's stopping you? Well, Jonathan, come on, look at my dad. I mean, he's so happy to be helping me. He walked that extra mile just coming around to the idea of me being an actress. The least I can do is take his advice. He could be wrong, you know. Even with the best intentions in the world. Nah, he's probably right. Don't sell yourself short, Cindy. Hey, Johnny, the kid's doing great. Yeah, so she's been telling me. Uh, um, Daddy? Yeah. I, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate all you're trying to do, but it's just that I... Hey, I... forget it. I got to tell you, kid. I never knew how happy helping you. Working with you instead of against you could make me. I mean, I feel like we're partners or something, you know? Yeah, I know. Hey, I got you something. I knew you couldn't go to that ball with your hair looking like the end of the rainbow, and... And I know you don't want to change it. So I figured this would be a happy compromise, huh? What do you think? Well, it's 
soup at Daddy. I just... Uh... I know what you're going to say. I, sh I shouldn't have spent the money, huh? Hey, so what if it cost a bundle? You deserve the bet. What do you think, huh? It's beautiful. Thank you, Daddy. Mr. Prince. Oh, I understand. There, there has to be a professional distance between an artiste and his actress. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Monsieur Prince, I saw your last film five times. Tres check. <laughs> tres, tres, tres check. <laughs> it was, um, oh, what, what is that word in English? A bomb. The director was a stiff. I wouldn't hire a clown again to direct me to the men's room. Isn't that Tres amazing? That's exactly what I thought when I saw it. <laughs> stiff. Yes, stiff. I said, um, a, a marvelous premise, but stiff. <laughs> but, but there is another word in English that I'm searching for. Crud. Crud? Yeah, the movie was crud. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not very light on my feet. <laughs> not very light on mine, either. about this latest find of yours. Haven't had a chance to, sir. Well, my dear, I'm Arthur King. I own the studio. It is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. King. And you are? You're a mystery guest. But right now, why don't you just call her Cinderella? Oh, I like that. I like your flair, my man, Cinderella. Well, my dear, may I have the pleasure of this dance? That was good, Johnny, that Cinderella gimmick. I do my best. Around. I'm gonna get some eats. Okay. Starlet, Roger Verdeen's latest find. Well, she's nothing but skin and bone. Oh, that's all right, dear. You have enough meat and potatoes to go around for everyone in the room. Well, at least I danced with Maxim. <laughs> he wouldn't even look at you. You make me sick, you know that? Oh, shut up, the both of you. It would do you both some good to watch how a real lady carries herself. Did you see Good Dodd's last picture? Yes. Uh, what did you think of it? Not much. But what interests me is what you thought. Uh, I thought it was a travesty. Really? Why? Uh, no uh, depth, uh, no uh, texture, no layers. And uh, so manipulative and pretentious, really, don't you think? Precisely, well, that's exactly what I thought. And what did you think of Fellini's last film? <laughs> well, uh, what can one say, huh? Fellini is Fellini. Either you like him or you don't, but uh, in the end, he uh, remains Fellini. 
<laughs> oh, yes. Can I help you, Mr. Prince? No. Mr. King, may I cut in? Well, uh, I'll allow it. But only on your promise you won't monopolize this lovely creature for too long. Well, don't worry, I won't. I'll see you in a few minutes. Ciao. 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 What is with the voice in this getup? I don't know what you mean, monsieur. I mean, I met someone the other day who wasn't phony like all the rest. That's who I invited. Oh, you've got to understand. It was not my idea. Hey, hey it's okay. King Lunch, you probably get the part. That's what you were after anyway, right? I was just dumb enough to think you were different. Just let me explain. You don't have to explain. When you got what you wanted, right? That's all that counts. I don't want to waste any more of your time, you know? I'm just small potatoes compared to King. He owns the joint. Don't let him get away. What are you doing great? Daddy, I'm not doing great. Cinderella's doing great. I'm, I'm glad you helped me. I, I've never been so happy knowing that you were backing me up, but I gotta go. Cindy, Cindy, honey! What's wrong with that kid? Everything was working out. Look, she she gets home okay. I'm gonna try to straighten things out with King. We went by Cindy's place. She wasn't there. What's going on? Where is she? She's in the ladies' room crying. Crying? Is she crazy? King wants to sign her. It all worked like a charm. She's in. Vinny, she doesn't care about that now. Why? Because she thinks you're ashamed of who she really is. What are you talking about? She tried to tell you tonight, but you wouldn't listen. That wasn't your daughter tonight. She doesn't want to be that person. She doesn't want to be Cinderella. She just wants to be Cindy, but that's not good enough for you. I just want her to be happy. Then tell her you love her, not some character out of a fairy tale. Cindy. Cindy, look. I want you to try to understand something if you can. You see, you and me, we're kind of alike, you know? I mean, I see a lot of me in you. Well, I never made nothing of myself, and I'm a nobody. Well, nobody who handles nobodies, and maybe I was trying to make you into somebody else because I didn't want you to be like me. I didn't mean to hurt you by doing it. I love you more than anything. agent in this town that could get work for Corey Klein and his uh, canine clowns? Or for Marvin Mandrake and his musical saw? Hmm? Daddy, these people, they're not just your clients. You care about them and they care about you. <laughs> the nicest thing you ever said to me was that I reminded you of you.
Look, why did we have to come down to this dump? Mr. King, like I told you, it's the only place I know to find her. All right, let's go. Look at this. All they write about is mystery girl snags lead in King Studios' new flip. I wonder which one she was. This better not be a wild goose chase, Prince. Mr. King, Mr. Prince, what an honor. I'm sure. All right, my boy, where is she? Where is my mystery girl? You mean the girl you want for the part is here? Then it can only be one of my daughters. <laughs> it's me! I danced with him! You danced on him, you mean? It's definitely not your daughter's. Where is she, Prince? She's over there. Fendi? Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, but I thought it was a travesty. No texture, no layers, no depth. And so manipulative and uh, pretentious, really, don't you think? Uh, it is you. It can't be you. This is me, Mr. King. Not some phony baloney you met last night. You said she was an actress, a European actress. No, no, you said it. I am an actress, and I'm a darn good one, and I would like the chance to audition for you, but it's me, Cindy. I don't like being made a fool of. You'll never get that part. Not if you were the last actress on Earth. And I want an explanation from you, Prince. That's if you want to keep your job. Oh, he didn't know nothing, sir. I fooled him, too, and he was a lot harder to trick than you. No, I wasn't. What's that? Mr. King, she's right for the part. Not the way she was the other night. The way she is right now. Gutsy and honest. Well, she's definitely not going to be in my picture. Now, if you keep this up... No, no. Mr. King, it's not your picture, it's mine. It's my script. I wrote it. And I know who should play the part. Somebody special. And that somebody is standing next to you right now. You are through at my studio. Then I'll go to another studio. See, Mr. King, I'm very good at what I do. And I don't need your money to do it. But I do need her. You're a fool. Mr. King, after him, girls, after him. He owns a studio. What'd you do that for? Like I said, because you're special. Well, so are you. That makes two of us. Yeah. Do you want a cup of coffee? No. 